Uh, my name is Mesha Kojiko, a teacher of biology. Uh, I want to welcome you to our today's lesson, uh, where we're going to talk about the hearing process and look at the mechanisms that the ear employs in the process of hearing. In our previous uh, lesson, we talked about the structures and functions of parts of mammalian ear, which I want to believe that uh, we are still uh, aware of. So we talked about uh, certain parts, and uh, if you look at the mammalian ear, and all of us have got the outer external ear, uh, that is in mammals, if you look at uh, what we are having, we have the part of the ear that is called the pinna. The pinna, uh, from our previous lesson we said, is a cartilage that is funnel shaped. So in this process of uh, hearing, we are going to see, uh, see how a structure is modified so that it makes it possible for uh, the process of hearing to be uh, accomplished. One, we have the pinna. We can see the pinna which is made up of cartilages. This pinna is uh, funnel shaped. All of us understand what a funnel is. So, the main function of the pinna, because of its uh, modification, is that it collects sound. Having collected that sound as much as possible, it then directs the sound into the other part of the ear, which is tubular in nature. That part is what we are calling the external auditory canal. External auditory canal uh, changes the sound, sound uh, into sound waves. I mean, into vibrations. So that means that when the, the pin has collected the sound, then it uh, directs them to the external auditory canal, which then make them vibrate. So uh, the sound waves that are directed to the external auditory canal are then going to be transmitted to the other part of the ear, what we are calling eardrum. The eardrum is also given the name uh, tympanic membrane. This tympanic membrane, or rather the eardrum, uh, plays a vital role. These sounds are then, uh, uh, they are further changed into vibrations, after which they are directed to another part of the ear, which we are calling the ear ossicles. We said that the ear ossicles uh, are made up of, uh, or rather is made up of uh, three small bones. The small bones in order of their occurrence are the millers. Then we have the other part called the incus. Then we also have the last part of the ear ossicle that is called the steps. What happens when the sound, uh, which are already changed into vibrations, get into the ear ossicles? So the first sound wave uh, hits the millers, then transmitted to the incus, after which it is then taken to the steps. Once they get there, the main function of these three special bones is to ensure that the sound vibrations are amplified. We understand what is amplification in this case. That is, the sound is made louder, or maybe uh, the pitch of the sound is increased. Then from there, the sound waves are then are transmitted via the oval window. That means that immediately from the, uh, the, sound, the, the ear ossicles into the semicircular canals, the, uh, the, the oval window then transmits the sound waves via another window called uh, the round window. From the round window, there is a tube we can see the highly coiled tube, what we call the cochlea. A cochlea is made up of three tubes and it is highly coiled. That high coiling is important because it increases the surface area for the hearing process. So if somebody asks you why, 
uh, the, the one of the adaptations of the cochlea will say it is highly coined to increase the surface area for hearing process. This again implies that the process of hearing takes place at the cochlea. So these uh, tubes here that are coiled in the cochlea forms a cavity. That cavity is filled with a special fluid. That special fluid is what we are calling the endolymph. So this one here maybe sometimes you can see in a situation maybe you, uh, you are swimming in a river and then by accidentally water enters your ear. When you come out of the, uh, the water, then uh, maybe you walk, you'll find some abnormal sound, some uh, deep sound coming out. The, where that is when the water enters the, uh, the endolymph. So the hearing process takes place at the cochlea. So the endolymph, uh, the, the information on the endolymph is then uh, transmitted via a tube. That is uh, the nerves that is called the auditory nerve. The auditory nerve is connected to the brain where the sound vibrations from the endolymph are then directed to the brain. The main reason why they are taken to the brain is to ensure that they are interpreted. So the interpretation here is going to be in terms of uh, uh, the tone of the sound. And uh, this tone here, actually we talk about the pitch. The pitch, uh, which is again going to depend on the frequency with which the sounds uh, come in. When the sound waves are high, then we expect a higher frequency, what we are calling high tone. And when the sound waves are, uh, let's say, fewer in number, then we are going to uh, have a low tone. So the loudness or uh, uh, maybe uh, the loudness of the sound will be determined by the frequency with which the sound hits the what? The, uh, the ear uh, cochlea. So, you can see what we are talking about. This is a process that uh, is a procedural. It comes from the pinna, which collects the sound. After collection of the sound, the sound is then taken to the external auditory canal. The external auditory canal uh, then changes, uh, uh, sends the information or maybe impulse to the uh, tympanic membrane, where the function of the tympanic membrane, or what we are calling the eardrum, is to change the sound waves into vibrations. The sound waves in vibrations are then directed uh, as an impulse to the next part that we are calling the ear ossicus. The ear ossicus are then going to uh, change the sound or rather uh, amplify the sound. And we have said that the ear ossicus are made up of three special types of bones. The millers, the first one, uh, then the middle one is the incas, then we have the, the steps, all together form what we call ear ossicus, which then amplifies the sound. After the amplification of the sound, the sound is then passed via the uh, oval window, then from the oval window it goes to the round window. From the round window uh, it is then passed to the part, a uh, very special part that's called the cochlea, and the cochlea here uh, is where the hearing process takes place and it's made up of three tubes that are coiled. That coiling we have said increases the surface area for the hearing process. Within the tubes is a special type of fluid that is called the endolymph. The endolymph uh, then uh, takes the information via the auditory nerve. The reason for taking the information or rather the impulse to the brain is to interpret that uh, sound so that the ear can be able to perceive it perfectly depending on the position of the organism. So uh, the brain then interprets the information. After interpreting the information, it is always interpreted in terms of the pitch. That is whether there is a higher pitch or a low pitch which uh, we also, uh, we've said, will depend on the frequency with which the sound waves uh, come in. When the sound waves are high, or well, has got higher frequency, then we simply say that we have a high tone. And when they are fewer, then we say there is going to be a low, a low tone. 
So the loudness of the sound will then de be determined by the frequency with which the sound waves uh, are interpreted in the mammalian brain. So uh, from there we can now at least say uh, that we know the mechanism of hearing process and I want to thank you for listening to our lesson of today. Thank you very much.